Hey, hello everyone, this is Yashwar. So in the previous video, I have been explained about uh, quantum supremacy by Google. So in this video, I am going to explain what actually quantum computing is. So how it works when compared to traditional computing. So if you haven't watched my previous video, please watch that first so that you came to know what actually quantum computing and what, what actually that term which has been coined recently quantum supremacy is. So now I will explain what actually quantum computing is and how our traditional computing works. So see our, our traditional computing deals with only two points, 0 and 1. So whether you are working on any particular process it deals with only 0 or not. Whether it may be 0, if it is 0 then uh, if it is not a 0 then it is 1 or if it is 0 then it is not a 1 so only one thing can be possible it is like a coin if you um, like if you are working on a toss it must be a hand or tail but not both right so but quantum computing is not that it should be head and it should be tail both so quantum computing gives you that flexibility so quantum computing has 0 1 also it has one new dimension called superposition So this superposition is the whole thing in quantum computing here. So it is like when you toss a coin, at the same time it is head and tail. So if you uh, if you, you may wonder that how is it possible? Like if you toss a coin in the so when the coin is in the air, you don't know what actually it is, right? So quantum computing is also like the same. So I will explain uh, how it is possible. So quantum computing makes all suitable or all possible combinations at a single glance. So I will explain you with an example. Uh, see, uh, let, let us consider we have uh, four bits here. So we are working on four different processes. Four. So we have two power four combinations in general traditional computing. Right. So what may be the possibilities like? So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So goes on up to 1, 1, 1, 1. So these are the combinations we will get uh, when we toss up four coins or when we are dealing with four different processes. So these are the possibilities that may come. So if you want to guess one thing, so if there are 16 possibilities here, so consider. So these 16 are placed in a table. So if I ask you to guess, uh, like if I pick one particular thing, so if I pick this, so if I ask you to guess what have you picked. So what you generally do, uh, you will uh, randomly pick one and if it fails, you pick another. So there are 16, 16 possibilities that you get a correct one, right? So it means that you need to test or you need to guess 16 different times. So similarly, if you take a uh, password, password probabilities, so if you have set up a password in 16 different ways, it takes 16 attempts for a password hacker to break your password. So, so if it is 2 power 4, it is okay. So let me explain how quantum computing deals with it. So, so it is the box uh, which I have given to guess your password. So in normal computing, uh, you write 0, 0, 0, 0 first and if it fails, you write 0, 0, 0, 1, right? So what happens here is, in quantum computing, So every individual bit will be both 0 and 1. So what happens is, so if you give your probability equation to the quantum computing, so at the single attempt it will be entirely. So if I select a number like 1001, so it takes, so in the single attempt it has all the 16 probabilities here. So there are some operators which can reduce the wrong answer. So what happens in the single attempt, it can give you the correct answer, which is 1001 if I have picked that. So it is how quantum computing does. You may ask, uh, what is the difference here? Because it takes 16 atoms and it takes 1 atoms. So what's wrong? So if it is 2 power 4, then it takes 16 atoms and it is 1 atom. If it is 2 power 10, it takes 1024 atoms and it takes only 1 atom dead. If it is 2020, it takes 2020 atoms and it takes even 1 atom. So for every complex calculation, quantum computing comes with an easy solution to give the answer in a one single way. So it is the beauty of quantum computing. We can easily break the passwords also in quantum computing and we can have the probability uh, completely in our hands. So 
this is the advantage which is which quantum computing gives you in computing any anything. So even by using quantum computing, the most uh, irritating problem, NP hard problem, which is not, uh, which people think it is not solvable, can be solved with the, uh, the help of quantum computing because everything we can do in a single atom here, quantum computing. So that makes the beauty here. So and it is a practical example like how traditional computing is different from quantum computing. So hope you like this video and in the next video I am going to explain the applications of quantum computing in different areas. Thank you for watching.